The Trinity is established firmly in the Bible. It's true that you can't find the words Trinity or three in one in the Bible, but then you can't find phrases such as resurrection of the body, priesthood of all believers, or communion of the saints. Yet these doctrines are based on the Bible just as the Trinity is. Although only a couple of verses have all three members of the Godhead in a single list, there are many others that refer to all three together. Other passages state or imply that the Holy Spirit is God. And others speak of Jesus as God. The New Testament also quotes Old Testament statements about God and applies them to Jesus. We can even see hints of the Trinity in the Old Testament when God says to himself, let us, or in our image. I do have some concerns about the doctrine of the Trinity as it come, came to be formulated in the creeds. I don't think we've got it wrong, but it can encourage us to think too simplistically. We don't take into account passages such as Romans 8, where the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of God and also the Spirit of Christ. Of course, this may merely be different ways to refer to the one Spirit, but it may also imply that our concept of the three equal and separate persons is oversimplified. There are likely to be interrelationships in the Godhead that we can't encompass with simple creedal statements. But most of us don't want to read long theological explorations of the Trinity either, so we often resort to illustrations, with the result that the Godhead gets shrunk to the size of a three-leaf clover. Well, I might be about to make things worse, because I want to illustrate the Trinity by looking at the atom. An atom is made of three parts electrons, protons and neutrons. We could say that the electrons are like the Holy Spirit. They travel far from the core, in relative terms as far as asteroids travelling around the solar system. And protons are perhaps like the Father, because they determine the fundamental character of the atom. If the core has six protons, the atom is sooty carbon, but add just one more and it becomes gaseous nitrogen. Neutrons, the third component of atoms, are similar to protons, but a neutron can leave the core without altering the atom's character. So perhaps Jesus is a little like neutrons, because he can be separate from the Father, and yet this type of absence does not diminish or change the Godhead. Okay. This is no better than a host of other illustrations, because, like them, it breaks down as soon as you start to investigate any detail. However, it does have one advantage. We're still investigating atoms, and we're discovering many new complexities. If we're willing to explore the complexities of atoms, we might also be willing to continue exploring the nature of God. That is, we might continue to dig into scripture instead of complacently resting on what has already been discovered. We shouldn't expect to encapsulate the creator of the universe in a handful of theological slogans. The creator must be at least as complex as his creation. Simple doctrinal statements are good as summaries, so long as we don't fool ourselves into thinking they accurately represent the complex reality. However, they do provide a firm footings from which we can explore the depths of Scripture more fully. God bless.